Hi everyone, my name is Anton Smith. I'm a Senior Support Engineer in the Support Department here at GitLab. And today I'm just going to show a couple of the folks here how to do a pajamas Emma. So the Emma that I've, or the issue that I've decided to work on today is this. So use the pajamas button component for form submit on this HAML file right here. So Luckily for us, there is a link to the actual source code on what we're actually changing today. And just scanning this Haml file, I can see that there's a submit button. So that's likely what we need to change. And then we want to actually look at um, what we're changing it to. So something like uh, changing that to that by the looks of it. So it's actually pretty, it's a pretty simple change. Um, but the thing is, you got to make sure that the layout of the buttons and stuff look right. I recall when I did the avatars in the last pajamas party, some of them had custom styling and it can look a bit wonky. So sometimes you do have to play around with it. But um, yeah, luckily for this example, I think it is quite simple. So we don't have to worry about that too much. But um, probably the next question is, we we need to actually find this in the UI before we can actually do anything because we can make the change in the code. But what's the point if we don't actually see it reflected in the UI? So um, generally what I do um, in order to figure out where it is, is if you just look at the folder structure. So, I mean, straight away, I know it's in the admin area under the settings area, but because this is a partial view, um, that's the underscore at the start. So a partial view can be part of, you know, a normal view. So there's a bigger view somewhere that this is encapsulated within. So we just need to find out where that is. Um, so I'll just show you how I find, oh no, I won't use that one there. I'll show you where I find things. Now, there are multiple pathways to finding stuff that you need, um, but this is just the way I do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to search for that um, specific um, view um, in the code and just see if I get lucky. Okay, I've got nothing, so let's just try searching without the... Okay. So a view has come up and we can see it's an application settings network. So if memory serves me right, there is a network tab in the application settings. So we can quickly go to that. Okay, so this is my JDK. And what was that? The settings network. Okay, just wait for that because I haven't loaded this page before. Close a few of these. All right. So if we go back to, did I close the tab I actually needed? I did. All right. So if we go back into here, um, one of the things that are good to search for is just the names of fields or um, descriptors. So that to me kind of looks like some helper text. Um, so hopefully we can find something on the page that kind of resembles that. Um, oh, well, there you go. So that was nice and easy. So this must be the guy or the lady, depending on uh, how you refer to buttons. Um, this is what we need to change right here. So um, one of the helpful things um, here is um, when you're running a GDK or you're running Rails in development mode, it will actually show you um, the paths of partial views right there. So you can see that that's, this actually matches um, the file path here. So yeah, I think we're in the right place. Any questions so far? All right. You don't have, um, just a reminder, you don't have to wait for me to ask. Feel free to interrupt at any time if you have any 
questions, concerns? You want to berate me for doing something wrong? Alvin, <laughs> in particular, please do. All right. So um, this looks pretty straightforward. So um, because um, when I make changes to the code in real time, this is also another strategy to actually figure out if you're in the right place. So uh, sometimes I just like deleting things and then I just refresh the page and then see what happens. Um, other engineers I know will actually just change titles to things or you know change a color or something. But yeah, I just prefer deleting stuff. So I believe it was under, where is the limits? Search. So if you recall in the code, I actually deleted the button and now it's missing from the UI. So pretty sure we're in the correct spot. Um, so yeah, let's uh, just bring that back. Um, save the file. So that was a control S, command S. We're saving it and okay search 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 okay so that's there now okay so at this point we need to go back to here and oh no that's the wrong work uh, so you can see how i quickly lose my place in issues just open the link again. Okay, so see the parent epic. Okay, so we've got two examples that we can try out. So we can either try changing it to this, or we can try changing it to this. Now, what I'll do is I'll copy both in line so we can examine them both. So there's that one. And then there's this one. So um, something to be aware of um, when you're editing Hamill templates, the indenting does matter. So you have to actually get them in the right spot. Um, yeah, just one of the quirks. But um, OK, so what we have here is this is the original. Um, I don't think that's a comment, but I'll just put it there anyway for now and uh, to change to. And what we want to do is we need to get rid of this one and change it to one of these. So straight away, we've got a data attribute. So I think that this is probably going to be the one we choose simply due to that. And we just need to make sure everything matches up. So anything in data needs to equal what's in here. So it looks like that's true. Um, I don't think we need the class name because we don't actually have one here that matches up. But I'll, I'll just try it with both and see what happens. So with and without. Disabled true. We don't want to disable the button, so we might actually remove that. So what I'm going to do is let's just make the change. And I'm going to get rid of, I'll leave that in just to see what happens. So I think it's just going to show us a disabled button. Anton, didn't you just change the class? I did. What did you... Oh, okay. So um, I believe, so that's a GitLab MT5. So it's, that's a layout class. Now you can see here um, in the example, remove the CSS class as it started as a button and add the pajamas button to true. So you can see that these class names, while they do exist in um, the CSS file, they kind of, I kind of like to think of them as deprecated. So that's why I replaced them. Uh, I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So are there sometimes uh, classes that aren't like, like, is there a way to tell if there's a class? Oh, this sounds like such a new question. Are there sometimes CSS classes that, I mean, are there sometimes classes that aren't CSS classes? Uh, yes. And a good example of that would be, you know, in JavaScript. So sometimes you would refer to, a, you know, a collection of, or an array of different uh, DOM elements using the class name. 
So sometimes you might see that, but there's actually no CSS rules binded to that class. Does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah. Um, is there an easy way to tell if it's a CSS class? Is that the GL dash button? Uh, yeah, generally, no, there's no, there's no easy way, unfortunately. Um, most of the times, if um, it is a special CSS selector, oh, if, if it is a special class that's not being used in um, CSS, it's, it should be pretty obvious. Like, it's not going to follow this naming convention. It will be something, it will be a functional name. Oh, so okay. if it said something like search button table, you know, that's a very functional name. So maybe it wouldn't have CSS rules. And I mean... The other way to tell, actually, now that I think about it, is if you go into here, so, I mean, if you've ever played around with the developer tools, uh, let me just select the actual thing. You can see all the CSS rules here. So, um, for example, there might be a rule that says, um, you know, that search box table or whatever. And if it appears here, and it actually has CSS rules, then you know it's actually got CSS attached to it. Ah, uh, got it, got it. Yeah. Does that help? Yeah. So if you clicked on this button, like if you are over here in the developer tools, mm -hmm. would we see that the uh, GL dash button? Okay. Yeah. So you can see the GL dash button here. Um, and then the, for... Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, and I mean, for those that have never used this before, it's actually a really good way to um, just have a play around with the web page. And if you want to, you know, just, um, you know, do mock-ups um, live. So, I mean, you can just start, you know, clearing out things and doing whatever. So if I wanted a background color or something else, I don't know, 255, I can just change it immediately. Or if I want to, you know, Give it some border radio. Ah, God. It's been a long time since I've done this. Border color. I don't know. Make it F. Yeah, make it white. And then border. Border width. Five pixels. Oh, I mean, oh, okay. So that's not an actual selector. But you, you get the idea. Yeah. Let me just undo those changes. Now, I think I've already saved the pajama. Yeah, you know, I've already saved the pajamas code. So, should be able to refresh it now. And if I go back to the search. Okay. Oh, now, that's funny. The button looks different. Oh, because it's disabled. <laughs> that's right. So, um, you know, President Anton just realized that. So we just remove that. I did save it, didn't I? Let's just make sure. Hmm, what's going on here? Data disables. Do I have to actually enter something? Oh, what the? I don't know. What's that? Hmm? What's that? What 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 is that exclamation for? Oh. No, I was just surprised that my keyboard wasn't working, but it turns out that you can't type anything in here but numbers. Oh, yeah, because that's a numeric. There must be a numeric control. Yeah, type number. Okay, so the button itself seems to be working, but yeah, for whatever reason, I'm not sure why it's um, doing that. Normally, when it's a pajamas element, it should wrap it and it should say it's a pajamas element. So we've done everything correct. Pajama button equals true. 
Did I get the Indian thing right? Let me just let me just revert everything. Yep, the Indian thing was on the right level. Guys, let uh, let me just remove this class name and just see what happens. Yeah, so you can see um, it can take a little playing around sometimes. Um, Hmm. Maybe you've got maybe you've got caching turned on or something. Oh no, that's not right. No, no, it's disabled. So the background color of this input is this. Where was the if I revert it? Where was the color coming from? Let's just put both buttons on the page. Then we can actually compare them both. Yeah, there we go. So what makes, so this button is different because it's got these GL. Okay, so the GL button is where it's getting its colors from. Hmm. So we kind of want to, Maybe maybe that's the new theme that that normal one that you're looking at right now. Maybe that's the new theme. There's yeah. somewhere in the design system that um, shows us what it's supposed to look like. Ah, uh, yeah. So pajamas. Uh, every time I think about this, I just think of bananas and pajamas. Anyone watch that? <laughs> Maybe it was just me when I was younger. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yep. <laughs> I think I am B2. Or well, something like that, isn't it? That's it. So they look like what we saw. Maybe we need to add these classes. Button confirm. So button confirm seems like a bootstrappy class. It's also got GL button in there as well. Yeah, so that's why I'm a little confused because we're getting conflicting. Um, okay, so it's, oh wait, that's not even the Bootstrap website. Button. So this one's just a button primary. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if it actually uses Bootstrap under the hood, but that's normally what I refer to anyway when it's using a Bootstrap-like class. All right, let's just add that in to see what happens. So, hmm, didn't even do anything. Button confirm. Let's go back to here. I think the GL button one was there as well, Anton. The GL button class was there. Yeah, it's just that it's saying remove it. So I'll give that a try in a sec. I'm just reading in here. Um, normally they have examples in here. But they haven't got any. Yeah, I might just have to add them in and I'll just explain to yeah, them. Yeah, if that. you look at um, the original issue, like for this particular file, mm -hmm. um, example one removes the class altogether and just replaces pajamas, like, and just has pajamas button equals true. Give me a sec, I've lost my uh, issue again. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. Mm. Not sure. But then That's, we uh... used we used example number two, which puts in class GLMT five. Mm, but then pajamas button is true right at the end. Mm. Let me try example one. Why would either of them be different? I mean, they should have the same effect, right? Why would there be two different? results for the two different examples. 
Uh, because one has a data selector. So I think that was the main reason why. But to answer your question, I have no idea. That's often the mysteries of development. Sometimes you just have no idea how it actually does stuff behind the scenes. Yeah, there's something. Yeah, so now it says pajamas button true. Hmm. Maybe your GDK doesn't recognize the uh, pajamas button call. Oh, uh, you, you're being mean to my uh, GDK now, are you? Well, it's probably running on a Mac, so what can you say, right? Oh, that's Apple Silicone to you, mate. But, yeah, it's better than those Dells that they uh, distribute out there. Um, so I just update, I just updated my GDK today. It's, it's basically, um, you know, 30 minutes old, so... I'd be surprised if this wasn't working. Um, this new behavior is only available with probably the custom form builder. So if the submit button is part of a form four, then changing. Wait a minute, did I miss a step? <laughs> is there a form four? No, oh, there is. That's why it's not working. Ah, I skipped right to the examples. So, okay. So, what I need to do. Oh, won't that be funny if that was all that was? There we go. So, this is why you should read instructions fully. <laughs> all right. So, at least it's actually doing what we want it to now. Okay. So, let me just get rid of. I don't actually need that anymore. So we'll leave the styling that they've um, proposed in the examples. But yeah, you can see it's not a map issue, Alvin. It was just my uh, silly nature that I didn't read um, far up enough. No, no, that's fine. I mean, people with Macs usually don't read well anyway. <laughs> I just kidding. Hey, um, I was just uh, wondering, Anton. So yeah. even though, even though both of those examples are the same, mm -hmm. I mean they have the same result. Mm -hmm. Why do they look so different? Is there like difference in functionality or something between the two examples? Ah, uh, yes. Like time when we'd want to use the second one over the first one, or yeah. So it really depends on the button that you're replacing. So you can see that um, a very basic button might just look like this originally. Um, we oh, could I probably see. search for a couple if you'd like, but um, you can see in the code here, it was actually a more complex example because it included a data um, right. element as well. So I think anything in the data array will just insert um, additional attributes in the DOM. So right. um, Yeah, so you can see it's an additional um, element there. And um, now that I know that the pajamas element is working, you can see that there's this comment where the um, pajamas component is actually being pulled in and inserted right. into this template. So we know it's working now. Um, the other thing to do at this point is actually just test that, you know, the form actually submits. And it does. But also, um, we want to check and make sure that um, the layout is, you know, more or less the same. So what I normally do is I'm going to revert my changes really quickly, and I'll just rename this to old so we know the difference. So this is the old button, and then that's the new one. So it's just making sure that, you know, the padding is all right and things like that because, uh, you know, because we're replacing it, we need to make sure that the UI is still the same. So we can see that uh, the pajamas one has added uh, some padding or a margin. Yeah, it's added a margin of 16, padding of 8. And then I guess it will have pad... Oh, no, there's no margin under it. So... Okay, so there's that. 
And then we could just check the old button and see if it's uh, more or less the same. So yeah, the field sets there. Notice how this button's not adding padding on top. Or oh, margin, I should say. Oh, sorry, I always interchange those two terms. So yeah, the only difference with this button is it's just not adding a margin on top. So yeah, I can't edit, edit that. Oh, wait. Uh, what is it, 16? What was that one? Yeah, 16. So you can see it more or less is, is the same now. But um, because um, the pajamas component has padding on top, I'm kind of like, well, if it was there to begin with, maybe I should just leave it. Oh, because the component does that, I might just leave it the way it is. And I'll just point it out in the MR that, hey, um, the button has added an extra uh, 16 pixels on top. Is this a problem? And then I'll just let the UX reviewer decide. Um, but from that perspective, I mean, it's all done. Uh, the next step would actually be creating the MR. Any questions? Uh, just another quick one. Uh, it said that the, the issue says that you should try and create five changes per MR, right? That's right. So, so you want to do five of these before creating the MR? Definitely, for sure. So um, I've only done one today because, um, you know, it's just a simple, you know, we only got an hour. Um, but yeah, you, you're right. So ideally, you kind of want to commit yourself to um, at least five. And the reason for that is, um, you know, we want to be um, efficient with CI minutes, uh, which is probably the main motivator as well. So yeah, um, I can just go ahead and create the MR so you can just see what it looks like. But I'll go back probably tomorrow or next week and just add the other four. So you can see it doesn't take too long. I mean, once I actually read the issue properly and then add, you know, the bit up here, then it starts working. Um, now, unfortunately for me, why is my redo not working? Okay, I'm going to have to just manually add those changes back in. So just give me a moment. And let's just fix this up. And that's more this. All right, just make sure it's pajamas, and yeah, it is. Okay. I think at this point we can just go ahead and create the MR once I've uh, committed it. And that was, that was... Uh, I hate how it does that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, just give me a sec. I just want to check one thing. Why is your structure not SQL? Oh, it's just every time you update the GDK. Um, so the GDK will run the DB migrations and it generates that DB structure.sql. But um, the repo itself, when you clone the GitLab project, it already has a DB structure SQL. And sometimes, uh, you know, the file differs when you do a GDK update. And that's why it's in my um, staging uh, that we'll get. Yeah, it's just one of those pains you have to live with, unfortunately. So I need to add this file to my global get ignore, but I just haven't gotten around to doing it yet. Oh, very cool. Thanks, Anton. No problem at all. Keep the questions coming, Alvin. I like being kept on my toes. Um, so what I'll do is I'm, I'm just going to quickly share an MR that I've done in the past. So just to give you an idea of what's actually involved. So um, yeah, as Alvin pointed out, ideally you want to do five, M uh, five changes. 
Um, so five issues and then consolidate them into a single MR. So yeah, one is CI minutes because that reduces um, the spend there. And also it's more efficient for a reviewer to check five little things rather than have five MRs with five little, you know, one little thing in each. Um, and what I've actually done here is I've actually taken screenshots of the change before and after. So you can see here, for example, oh, what did I change there? Actually, hold on, I need to actually look. Place image tag icon. Okay, so there's an image. So it must be this guy, this one here. So you can see it slightly changes. Um, and that's just because with the pajamas um, components, they just have standardized sizing for avatars. So that's why it changed. And that, that's why it's really important to have these uh, screenshots side by side. So then whoever's reviewing it can actually see what the differences are. So I'll be doing the same as well. Um, this one, I think it's that image there. And I mean, you can see it, it barely changes. So that one's okay too. But um, what I need to do, as you can see, there are a few changes there. Um, you basically just have to add all these labels. Um, now, luckily for these types of front end changes, you don't actually have to worry about specs or anything like that. So if you're someone that doesn't like specs very much, then these are the um, changes you want to do. So, um, so what I'm going to do, um, change. Oh, our UI testing is done by people with their eyes. Yes. Right. Uh, we do also have some automated tools like Capybara that will do some click tests and all that kind of stuff too, to make sure it actually works. Um, what was that called? System or functional testing, I believe it's called. Maybe functional testing. Yeah. So we do have those um, tests as well that will run. So if, if, if whatever your change does breaks anything, I mean, you're going to know pretty quickly anyway. And then I think it will Cappy Barrow will actually take a screenshot and we'll show you what it actually looks like as well, which is kind of cool too. And that will be in the artifacts of the CI job. Strange search form button to pajamas. Uh, and I just put it into the master branch. Mm. Uh, naughty, naughty. All right. Um, I guess I could just check out a branch, um, like get branch. What will I call this? I'll call it Anton Pajamas Buttons. So. Oh, you can see I had Avatar Pajamas at one point. Mm -hmm. um, now that's my autocomplete <laughs> freezing up on me. And the buttons. All right. So yeah. Um, what I can actually do is um, I think I need to do this, don't I? So maybe I won't create the MR today. Um, but at the very least, I'll push something up. So it's kind of giving me some commitment to finishing it off. Now, when, when you push something up in the GDK, if you've set up left hook, it runs a series of checks to make sure that everything is actually fine. So you can see it's doing a lot of linting here, does some dot checks. But generally, yeah, it will only check what you've actually changed in your branch. Um, so you can see that's why it says nothing for inspection here. Um, now, it will also give you some heads ups on things that you need to be aware of. So it says a change log is missing. Now, for something like a pajamas MR, you don't need to worry about the change log. So you can just ignore that message. But yeah, you can see it's actually doing the push now down here. Oh yeah, and while I remember what I'm gonna do is if I go back to here, once I find the issue again, uh, is it this one? 
I will assign myself to it right now so no one else takes it. So yeah, um, generally with pajamas um, issues, you want to assign yourself to them like pretty quickly because um, you'll find on the day that everyone just you know picks and picks what they want really fast. And we're actually in a very um, lucky position in you know Asia Pacific or APAC because you know we're online before everyone else. So the pajamas bar party is you know a day earlier for us technically. So we we can grab all the cool stuff. <laughs> you want so yeah. All right. Um. Any thoughts, questions, Alvin? Do you have anything hard for me? I need harder questions, Alvin. Well, well, why are you picking on me? There's so many other people here. I don't know. I think uh, we just really jive. So you know, I'm going after you. Put time for another talk sometime about actually getting the GDK ready for this and setting up left hook, or do we just need to read the docs ourselves and work through it? Um, I mean, we do have a little bit of time left. I mean, we can go through that now if you'd like. Um, I was going to ask the same thing. Thanks, Mike, for asking. I didn't know if that was too much of a noob question that I shouldn't be asking in this session. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm always a noob. If everyone would just be like, oh my gosh, Kit, like, do you not even know? But no. yes, it's a good question, I think, because for someone who is just getting started, is there like a smaller instance, you know, just a simpler instance that we can spin up, not necessarily one that's got all the bells and whistles that we probably don't need just for the pyjamas um, work? Yeah, sure. Um, now, there are two ways I'm aware of that you can spin up the GitLab Environment Toolkit. So one is using, uh, hold on, Kit, not Toolkit. Let me just uh, kind of familiarize myself. Um, it's in here somewhere. I typically just use the one-line installation. Yep, um, that's what I did. You can use Git pod as well. I've never done it this way, but I think I've heard other support engineers using it and it's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, so you can see you go into the repo, you go Git pod. Oh, well, you have to create a Git pod account and link it up and then, yeah, you just wait seven or eight minutes and, huh, it's actually really easy. I might just chime in if that's okay for a moment, Anton. Um, yeah. It was maybe a couple of weeks ago, maybe a couple of months ago. I did a small presentation with a few people in Ginkgo about doing bug fixing with um, GDK in Gitpod. Mm -hmm. um, I've just provided the link in the chat for anyone that's interested. Uh, you have to be logged into the unfiltered account to see it, um, but uh, that might be useful for anyone that wants to like go through. It basically just goes through the steps that's on this project. Um, but I, I find Gitpod is very useful to have it just auto deploy to the cloud for you. So it might help. Cool. So anyone that's watching this video, this is where this um, is in this URL right here. But yeah, thank you, Ben. Um, but yeah, if I go back to... Oh, I keep losing my place. I think it's uh it's near it's nearly the end of the day for me. I think I need to knock off soon. That's um GDK. Um I was about to say it's almost food o'clock. Food o'clock. I think it's sleep o'clock too. I've been um I'm just really tired. I've been up since five. GDK. Yeah, you can see I'm stumbling over my tabs today. Probably a bit worse than normal. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so the one line... Did you go over one line, Ben? Uh, I don't think so. It's just git, git pod. Yeah, just git pod for this one. I've yeah. done the one line installation. It's easy the first time. But I've just updated my Mac and everything's broken. So I'm going to have to work out how to upgrade. 
did you upgrade from like upgrade the OS or did you change yeah, from upgrade Intel the to... OS which means then you have to upgrade the Xcode select and then you have to do a brew upgrade which breaks everything and then um, you have to put it all back I think actually what's happening is it might just be that it's been a while since I did GDK. So when I do the GDK doctor, it says, you need to install a newer Go, mate. Oh, now you also need to install a newer Postgres too. So it might just be ASDF install this, that, and the other, and it'll be right. Mm. Yeah, um, generally, I, I remember the last time I upgraded the OS, um, and that's the main reason and motivated I haven't upgraded my OS now uh, because of that because it breaks everything. Um, I know there's a, I think there's a GDK reset command. If you haven't tried that, um, that might be worth trying. Yeah, so running the doctor is also the pristine. I actually had to run that just before the call, um, which actually fixed it for me. Um, but same thing here, GDK. Doctor reset. Oh, there's a reset data, which is clean up. Um, yeah, I mean, the one line installation, you know, it does work. Um, you can also do the simple, which I think I did originally. But if you just want to get up and running, I, I would suggest just watching Ben's video because um, Gitpod, I think, is really good for people that just, they don't want to screw around. They just want to get coding as quickly as possible but um in saying that if um you have any trouble get mike or anyone else on the call setting either of those methods up i mean feel free to reach out um i'm sure anyone will you know I i'm happy to join you and figure it out um, but yeah i'm sure others would be keen to oh thank you that's all right and yeah, likewise, um, if you're working on a pajamas MR and you're a little stuck, I mean, feel free to just reach out in that pajamas migration day channel, or also, you know, feel free to reach out to myself or, you know, yeah, I, I think there will be a group of us working on the pajamas um, MRs this year, oh, this, this session, I hope, because, um, yeah, Alvin and I were going to work on a couple together last time, but I think um, we had a lot of tickets that just kind of popped up and we just didn't have time. Hey, Alvin, so this time around, we're going to have to do something. Yeah, yeah, me. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, we can make that a group, um, you know, event as well. Maybe we just all hang out in a room. We don't necessarily have to be talking or sharing, but just if anyone stuck or needs to bounce ideas we can definitely um arrange that but yeah um we've got a couple of minutes left does anyone have any other pending questions thoughts um or thoughts for next time i see a woofer on mic screen decided to come in did you <laughs> actually there's two of them there oh you know lottie and the black and white one is taiko oh. that's yep. it i've had enough i'm heading out again <laughs> <laughs> oh it's funny Ah, oh, cool um and Tom, do we, do you, how much time do we have left? Uh, three minutes, but if there's something that we want to dive into, I mean, I'll, we'll, we'll, we can figure it out. Oh, no, oh. I wasn't like, there's only because I was like, oh, it might, um, you know, like if you just quickly went through another one instead of with all the explanations, just this time just do another one, like a button one. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, like, we but, but only if we've got time. I would probably say we don't have time. Um, okay. Well, yeah, because <laughs> I've got a few. Yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, yeah, it's fine. Um, there are a few other things that I need to check up on anyway. But, um, you know, as I said, um, you know, when the Pajamas Day comes around or even if you want to work on them earlier, we can definitely set that up if you want to just rapidly smash a few out. But, yeah. Um, what I'll do is... On the day, I'll probably just 
I'll just book an all-day event or something and anyone can just jump in whenever they want. I think that would be a good way of doing it. But yeah. Um, good idea. Yeah, the only other thing I was going to suggest is for next time, um, if no one else has any thoughts, I was thinking about doing a different kind of um, code exploration. So this is just a bit of insight into next time. So... For those that are familiar with the Zendesk Download Router, it's an extension that I wrote a wee while ago. And there are a few pending issues that need to be worked on, um, mainly because Google are moving to a different um, manifest version next year. And as a result, it's going to break a lot of existing Chrome extensions. So there's kind of a bit of a motivator for me to, as a maintainer, get everything fixed up for the next um, year anyway. So we could probably pick one of these. Um, so if you're familiar with JavaScript, I mean, this will be right up your alley. So one of the things I've actually been wanting to implement for a long time is this feature here. So if you're in a ticket, the idea is, you know, every ticket comment you know, you can download all the attachments at once. But more often than not, if you're working with a customer that submits multiple GitLab SOSs in each response, but you kind of want a way to categorize them on disk, um, I think this would be a perfect way to do that. So if I download all the attachments in a ticket comment, download it to a separate folder within the parent. So we could use dates or something along those lines and I think that would be a really valuable feature so yeah oh with that um I think we can wrap it up unless anyone has anything else all right thank you for joining um enjoy your, it. no problem at all enjoy your respective days and we'll see you around Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Anton. Thanks, Anton. See you. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Thanks.